Floor Models kit review time. Today we are reviewing the monster that is the Wing Nut Wings 130 second scale Felix Stowe late edition. This is the F2A version. Um, obviously they do an early version as well. This has to be the biggest kit Wing Nut Wings have done to date. Um, not to mention expensive. Uh, UK price 250, just sub 250 quid. So it's not a cheap kit, uh, but it's definitely big. I know we've done big recently, um, we've just done the Heinkel in 30 second scale, this thing's even bigger. So uh, basically, as you can see from the box, um, some lovely artwork, you know, wing nut wings, we've dealt with them before, we've, we review their kits, but it's a bit hard to review them because they're always so bloody good, they're perfect kits. Uh, it comes at a price, but if you're thinking about doing these things, if you're if you're in a situation thinking, oh, I don't know, if you're into this, just buy it because it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be fantastic uh, and uh, you will have a great time. For me, it's just too big, too wrong genre, it's rigging and all those things and everything else. But I have to still say, uh, doing that wing nut wings, I did the uh, Sopwith triplane, was still one of my favourite kits. Uh, it's beautiful, it goes together, it's, it's engineering at its pure best. Anyway, as you can see, beautiful artwork. The box is absolutely beautiful. I love the way this is embossed and all the rest of it. The wing nut wings is embossed. This is embossed and everything else like that. Looking around the box, you've got some of your markings options, which is what also attracted me to this particular kit. Beautiful markings and all the rest of it. Um, it you know, as you said, it, it's one of those things. It was the, the pioneering and the golden age of this type of thing. I can't even see if you can see this on the thing. So anyway, your kit number for this one is 32066, um, as you can see on the back, just the mirror. And we've got the usual gump uh, from around the world on the back, Whew, which gets you back to here. As I say, big review. So in the box, which is a beautiful box, very sturdy, you will find crammed full of plastic, as you can imagine. It's a giant old box, this. As you can see, uh, you know, it's just absolutely stuffed. This is where your money's going and all the rest of it, all right? So, where do you start? Where do you put it all? Um, I should have thought about this. We're gonna have to maneuver some stuff around. Hopefully you guys will still be able to see the review. So, in one. Um, it's so big, I'm, I'm gonna have to move this box so you guys can see it a little bit better. I don't know where to put it all. It's so big, there we go, that'll do over there. No, it wasn't enough. Great review, going well this one. So, Wing Up Wings, um, if you didn't know, Peter Jackson is the man behind the company. Obviously him of Lord of the Rings and all of those great things and everything else. The thing that you will immediately know um, as soon as you have a look at Wing Up Wings is quality. These things reek of quality. Um, right the way through to the actual the designing and everything else like that. We're going to have a look at the manual to be honest afterwards. Normally I like to look at the manual first. This time we're going to go it's slightly different purely because I can't get down through it all. So. Generally, you're talking extremely high quality plastic. Um, the injection molding is exquisite. Uh, the detailing level of detailing is always very nice. Straight off the bat, looking at this one, if we just drop the camera down to its normal position. All right. As you can see, just looking at the sprues, just about fits in the camera angle here, you can see some absolutely fantastic details. If we just have a a small run around and then you'll get bored of me saying how wonderful it is but generally you've got the linen effect um, over the actual the ribbing and everything else down here i presume this is one of the control surfaces it's beautifully done uh, it's beautifully rendered fantastic the other thing you do notice is somehow wing nut wings never put an injection pin on any visible part which gets funny because this is a one piece and there's no ejector pin on there at all and you've only got what i can see is three push outs one two three four five if you do the other ones but generally no problem at all with it the only thing you have noticed which is you're not going to see it but you could on the inside here we've got ejector pins all over here it's a shame i'm surprised it has i thought you wouldn't because they're smaller kits you don't see it at all and i'm like my wing section was this big so i am surprised you do have got ejector pins in this detailed area around here. Purely as you look at it, you might be able to see, we can probably bring this top one just a little bit closer, um, pretty much scattered with ejector pins all over it. Catch them in the light, you might be able to see them better, okay, and all the rest of it. But generally, the outer texture, and obviously you catch it in the light, you can see the facets of where the material, uh, it's like the dope linen effect, wraps right the way over all the formers. 
it's beautifully done. I'm presuming down here we've got the front. Um, I don't know if it is wood, but it certainly looks like it, um, of all of this. Absolutely fantastic. But generally the quality of the mold and everything else, as you can see it, is amazing. Don't think we need to look at the glass, they're just standard flat parts, that's fair enough. Uh, they look great. So, next giant piece. Okay, so in massive bag number two, somehow I'm nervous to not cut it. Okay. Down here we've got the actual hull sections as you can see it here. So you've got the, the wood, catch it in the light as you can see, is reproduced underneath. Okay, beautifully done and everything else like that. The sides, these bits and pieces, they're gonna have this, those parts on there bolt to the side of it. So there's no real detail there whatsoever. But as you can see in this stuff here, it's beautifully molded. Some of the major framework, the structure uh, and everything else, as you can imagine, coming right the way over it. But anything that's structural, absolutely fantastic. On the inside, for once, it's you don't see this ever. Okay, but the thing is, it's a complex piece of molding to get that out of the mold so I can understand why. But normally you don't see any of these little ejector pin areas and things like that. It's normally something uh, from other companies. But generally, as you can see, pretty good all over that. It's just a large old lump. Then we've got the wings, and this is where I'm hoping they've gone back to their normal ways of not putting an ejector pin anywhere near it, which will just show. The other thing as well, what you have to appreciate is, this weighs, I wish I had some digital scales because, and um, this isn't my kit, so I do apologize, honestly it won't break, but it weighs an absolute ton. It, it feels heavy, which would worry the pants off of me because this bit of plastic here, this is a chunk of plastic. It feels rigid, it feels strong. I just hope over time your wings don't bend. Okay, and all the rest of it. I've just got to look at that. I'm not sure that's a blemish in the plastic or or what it is. But generally, um, let me check. We haven't, thank God for that. As you can see, you've got this great detail on these massive, massive wings uh, all the way over. Um, the details are still in here and all the little parts are in there. The actual the framework, the ribbing, the texture, uh, the linen effect is absolutely beautiful. And there isn't an ejector pin on this. It's all off to the side. And that's why I was surprised that that has got so many ejector pins when they can produce something like this. But I'm guessing this is flat, so it must come out a lot easier out of the mold. But generally, as you can see, some very nice, you've got the small, hopefully you can see on the close-ups, um, you can see down here on these, these tiny little holes all around it is where your rigging goes in. <laughs> no, I'm okay with rigging now, it doesn't affect me too much. But the thing that amazes me, that sprue probably weighs close to what the entire of this 30 second hind call weighs. I tell you what, there isn't much between that. And that's because this is one solid chunk of plastic on these wings. They're not hollow, they are solid uh, and they feel it as well. Which you would hope then you're going to get no sag purely because they are so strong. Hope you get no sag. Okay, so in on the engines. We actually have, as you can see, this is now we're back to sort of wing nut wings. This is what wing nut wings do. As you can see, these engines are beautifully recreated. You're going to have a miniature museum quality model uh, once you finish this one. The quality of the engineering, the way they go together and everything else, I'm sure I don't even have to build this to know it will be fantastic. It is going to be good um, and it should give you no problems. As long as you follow the instructions, you'll have no problem at all. You don't get flash with wing nut wings. You don't get mist molds. Um, they are beautifully done. As you can see on these engine parts, they are absolutely brilliant. Very, very nice right the way through all of it, even down to these exhausts just down on here. The way that they're actually molded and done, it looks like they've been fabricated. Really, really nice. All of those beautifully done. Okay, that I assume is gonna be a mirror because obviously for the other engine, so we won't need to look at that one. Down here, this bag's had a bit of a hit. So it's not me. So we have here, this is the underside of the wing, I do believe, because it's smaller on the underside. Again, it, it feels so heavy. These wings absolutely weigh a ton. Massive pile of bags over here now. 
Um, huge weight. Thick, genuinely, beautifully done, beautifully rendered texture all over these. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is obviously the lower half of the upper, I presume. Um, you know, the center section, if you like, which you would imagine. This is why you've got these sections in here go into these here, okay? Uh, and that's what's gonna lock it all together and hold it all together. So plenty of glue in here, you're gonna need it, okay? But again, the quality, there's no ejector pin marks on any of that whatsoever. Uh, and as I say, the texture from the linen effect, again, beautifully done. Ooh, heavy. Summing up, it's a heavy kit, very heavy. It would look beautiful, don't get me wrong, it's just that where do you put things this big? Okay, so, good point here, as you can see, the prop, uh, we've got the prop there, one piece prop for your metal leading edges uh, for the, uh, down on the tips as well, as you can see, some more of the deck work and everything else, some more, this is the tailplane uh, areas as well, as you can see, right the way up, and obviously the tailplane itself, uh, for the first part of it, I assume it's going to be in two bits with the rudder section all on there and all the rest of it, with them coming off here. Uh, really nice, very nicely done. I'd say we've got the stress, because uh, obviously it being thicker in those areas, some nice little stress work points. Very good. Okay, so, next bag. God, the sprues are getting bigger. The further you go in, the bigger the sprues get. So, right, okay, these are the um, side panels, I do believe, aren't they? I'm sure they were the side panels. Um, let me just check my thing. Yes, I think looking at the box, these are the side panels. Beautifully done, big old pieces. The inside you don't have to worry about at all because they're just going to go onto that side of the fuselage as you go the way through. Beautifully done, very nice. No problem with any of those whatsoever. As I say, it, it's almost boring reviewing kits from uh, Wing That Wings. It's almost, you don't have to look at the plastic, because you know it's going to be brilliant. It's just that the, the instructions are like a work of art, and it gets boring because it's just so nice that you can never find a fault with any of them. Generally, as you say, it's going to be difficult to look around these sprues because it's just so big. So we'll just roughly have a look. You see, we've got the other prop down here. We're going to have a mixed set. We've got different props. So imagine the late and the early version. They do both versions. This is why we've got it. So we've got some bombs just down in here, some radiator. I assume these are fuel tanks uh, on here and other areas as you make your way around the entire of the sprue. Some of the bracing. Uh, down here as you can imagine and then going right the way over generally beautifully done all very nicely detailed quite penny uh, quite a few ejector pins in here some big ones but then it's a big sprue to get out right the way down to we've got the machine gun just down here we've got the control wheel because it was a giant wheel in those days uh, and everything else with it so again beautifully done sprue the next one is going to be a mirror because obviously it's a match pair so we've got a mirror one like that so you get into a massive pile over there Okay, the last screw. Okay, so in this last one, you've got the internal framework. Uh, which way up we go? Are we going this way or the other way? Uh, the other way. So um, down here, as you can see, we've got the framework. This is going to make up around the cockpit area and everything else in the wood effect right the way through. So down here, we've got things like control lines, things like that. Um, obviously, fuel flow lines, I assume these are. All the different parts right the way through. The decking area for the cockpits, things like that. We've got the actual instrument panel over here. Catch it right the way over for the close-up uh, and everything else. And as you can imagine, beautifully done. No problems with any of that whatsoever. I can't find a fault with this as usual. And sometimes I must admit, quite horribly, I do try. Right, so, the instructions. <laughs> as you can imagine, um, we've spoken about it before. The instructions aren't like instructions. They are basically like a manual, okay, on how to do it. It's not like some horrible manufacturers who just put in, you know, one, two, miss a few, and there's your kit done. This will talk you all the way through it. So, usual thing. A little bit of working, um, and then obviously into the actual colour callouts. So Tamiya, Humbrol, and then your FS standard colours, which is always quite handy. What you've got in the box, which we obviously have just been through, 
and then going through. So because these are full color little manuals, not only does it teach you about putting the parts in, it's talking about the colors they are for your color call outs. And if you follow this to the letter, you will have no problem, trust me. You've got reference shots as you make your right the way through of what you're looking for. So you've got this fuel tank system over here going through, obviously for the instruments and putting it all together. Uh, and even right the way down to the harnesses and painting up the colors and everything else. And it's showing you here what you're seeing here, so to speak. So this is the beauty about them. This is that internal framework we were talking about. Um, and then you've got obviously the side mounted guns uh, at the back there. Okay, and then right the way through. And some things are really nice touches, like like this guy down here is, you know, this shows the photo of it to show you what you're doing all the way through. Control wheel, as we were talking about, right the way through going in, your harnesses, removing some of the little parts on there. Okay, and then right the way through. Think of this thing as a Catalina of its day. All right. That's what you're looking for at the end, a model on its own. That's the thing. It's a real shame when you cover all these things up because by the time you're into this stage, it looks amazing and all the rest of it. By the time you rig it, and this is just the control lines and everything else as you can imagine going through, color coded. Um, so obviously you've got the ones for the engines, the ailerons and the bracing to give you an idea of the different ones if you can use different wires and thicknesses and things like that. But it shows you how you run those, those you supply yourself. Okay, um, you've got little changes obviously because the late and the earlier versions and things like that. So that's talking about those, the ones you need to remove to give you the right types. Painting for the internals and then obviously fitting internals, what you're looking for at the end of it. Carrying on right the way through, as you can imagine, bringing it all together now, getting the roof on, which hides all that beautiful work you've done to so make sure you get good photos of it. Okay, and then right the way through. Again, references all the way in. Bracing for the tail, putting the tail system all together. All that wiring, okay, for the rigging and all those things. And then you're back into engine mode. So into the engine, again, you've got things about here for the wiring, the internals, all those different bits and great reference shots and nice color call outs as you make your way through. Uh, and then you've got the grills uh, for the radiator system. Again, making your own hoses and various things to liven it all up and adding the parts in. Getting those engines installed and fixed on. Okay, carrying on without the bracing for the actual engine mounts, things like that, onto the first part of the wing section going in. Uh, removing some of the little parts in there. Then we're back into top guiding you. I can't even say talking, it's guiding you through step by step about how to put in all this rigging, how it goes in, when to put it in. And as I say, as I found out doing earlier kits, if you follow them, they've got it right. They know what they're doing. Okay, control surfaces and things like that. Putting in the bracing, taking off some little areas, control surfaces going on there and everything else like that. We're doing all your wiring up, starting to work on your floats. Working on the guns, the gun mounts, and everything else like that. And ding, in there, putting those in the bomb section, how they fit on. Amazing stuff. Okay. Props going on. Then you've got some nice trestles, um, which obviously are going to come with a kit and everything else like that. So obviously, you don't glue them on, but that will, I think, be a must if you're having it on display just to take some of the weight off of these wings. So it's really nice to have those trestles. So you've got one for the front, and then you've got the cart. This is what that uh, this bracing unit was was a cart for it on dry land. Okay, and then your final bit of bracing wire and everything else like that. Okay, so you're just going through all of those others to put in there. You knock yourself out, gang. <laughs> all right more about it following the wires and everything else like that putting all of those in and then you've got the history um, for your markings of what you're doing so it's the 1918 one okay uh, these are all 1918 I think all of them but as I say really nice color photos of the originals sorry black and white photos of the originals with great color call outs all the way through as you can imagine for all the different versions and as you go in there fantastically done great reference photos as i say it's amazing when you see it like this and then out amazing decal sheet as you can imagine on a kit this size is quite big um, i'm not going to get it out because we know they're wonderful but we've got the decal sheet down there obviously as you can imagine by the size of the randalls it gives you an idea of the size of your hand versus the randalls gives you an idea how big this thing is and in the back here we've got a little bit of photo etch um, we get it down here on this one, I think probably easier. Uh, as you can see, it's beautifully done. 
Um, you've even got this little one now for a little name plaque, which is quite nice, never noticed that before. But you've got your seating harnesses, things like that, a little bit going down there. Some of the bracing, these little guys here for the bracing wires to run through. Uh, some gun sights, some little chain work, things like that. Nothing massive, but trust me, by the time you put this thing together, it's not gonna need anything else. So there we go, that is probably the biggest kit I've done, certainly looked at this year. <laughs> uh, and everything else, this is the Wingnut Wings 132nd scale, Felix though, this is the F2A late version. As I say, they do an early version as well, so depending which one it is. If you wanted to get it imported, it's gonna cost you around about 214 pound with your imports and taxes and various things, uh, or it is readily available at Hannons and things like that. I think they've got it around about 240, something else like that, but don't quote me on it. But as I said, if you are in the market for one of these monsters, it's gonna be a big old build, and just make sure you've got somewhere big to put it. <laughs> 